peace in Europe has been broken. Russia has attacked Ukraine, invaded Ukraine. And it's not just the peacekeeping troops that Putin kind of like laughably claimed he'd stick to. He announced a special operation. And right after, it was just an invasion. So the AP has reported and videos have shown explosions in the capital, in Mariupol, in the southeast, in Kharkiv, all over, all over the country in different locations. And the invasion happened <clears throat> not just in the south, not just in the east, but in the north as well, which indicates that Belarus is likely assisting in these, these efforts. And the north doesn't really have from my understanding, the Russian-speaking concentration that the other more bordered regions do. So an invasion that's um, that targets those regions is, you know, is a lot more of a larger scale situation. It's unconfirmed that Belarus is assisting, but it just seems that way as of right now. So Zelensky uh, went to address the nation last night. He said that Russia had targeted military infrastructure particularly air defenses, and also went after border guards in the Donbass region. And Putin's whole claim here, the underpinning of what he's saying, is that this is a denazification effort. And he's trying to echo back to, to past World War II efforts um, to denazify Germany. But it's really more akin to when the Bush administration stole that term, debothification. It's a pretext for imperialism and a pretext for occupation. And, you know, it's like when you say there are some really there are some bad actors in like this nationalist anti-Russian um, factions in, in Ukraine, in the military, et cetera. But he's using that as a pretext for imperialism. Yeah, warrant for an invasion. <laughs> right. Um, and that's just kind of like much more like Saddam is a bad guy <laughs> and this is why we have to start a war than it is the like uh the the world war ii valor that he's trying to harken back to and it's just the liberation rhetoric of imperialists and he's also harkening back to world war ii i believe as a bit of a threat to kind of say to europe say to the west don't forget the sacrifices that we made which is true i mean the west has largely tried to erase the fact that 20 million uh soviets died fighting the nazis but it's 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 a bastardization of that effort in order to justify imperialism. Um, so uh, the reality is, is, as I mentioned, it's just brute imperialism. Um, the Their justification um, for this act of war, the denazification part, and then also Ukraine potentially joining NATO. Now it just really rings hollow, of course, <laughs> because they've abandoned diplomacy and they've embraced violence. And like talking about that at this point, it's just we're, we're past that. Here is a clip, uh, some footage that the New York Times has verified showing Russian helicopters circling near Kiev and firing directly at an airport outside of it. пролетіло не видно українського герба точно російські раз два три чотири п'ять шесть сім восім да слышно воу окей so that's just a bit of a... a... Ooh, yolky, palky. No, it's okay. It's just a restarted. Yeah. Um, so so that's just some of, of the footage, and we're seeing a lot of similar footage coming out about this as well. Um, as I mentioned, to headline the show, more than 40 Ukrainian soldiers confirmed by the Ukrainian government have been killed. Um, dozens more were wounded. That, it, that, that number is going to increase throughout the day. So yeah, they, they hit a lot of um, like sort of airport targets and some other military type targets. Uh, and yeah, people and apartment died. complexes, too. I mean, there's footage of 
complexes. I mean, again, we were this. The, this is like the fog of war. Yeah, it's hard to know like yeah. what footage is what. Right. I mean, that's why I went with the New York Times footage because they right. verify it. But we we're still getting a full grasp of what's happening and the death toll and the damage. But uh, but it, it was widespread throughout the country is oh, I yeah. think the biggest point. And I saw enough, you know, just based on like a live stream that's just always up. You know, you could on YouTube, you can search si blank city live stream and you can just look at a live stream on that city and there's one for a Kiev. And I watched it uh, really sped up, but around the time the shelling started and it what it was like grainy footage and traffic hitting the streets and people starting to flee. And what it reminded me of was uh, back in like 2003 or wherever, when I was, I had a TV in my room and I was ready to watch the invasion of Iraq. And I was kind of like, you know, pro American on that thing. And I watched it and I was like, huh, this doesn't seem great. And it's, it's horrible. And this is the, I felt the exact same way. Like last night watching people flee this stuff. And it, it's absolutely, and I didn't, I confess I wasn't expecting this to happen. That was um, in large part wishful. And uh, it's horrible that Putin's doing this. I, I, I do think like it, condemning that, and we'll get into this with Coburn maybe. Yeah. Like he'll have, have great context on that. Like I am only interested in doing that in the like in the context of a wider conversation of how we've got up to this this point and how the people of Ukraine have been used by as a as a as, as a, a proxy. And like I'm fully welcome to uh, you know ha emphasize Putin as the bad actor here, but I want a full conversation of that. Um, as opposed to like saying, uh, are you a, uh, are you secretly for Putin if you bring up like the IMF or something like that? Right. Like, and, and I, I, again, like this is, this is the act of aggression. This is awful. And it's, you know, I don't know. It's what's one of the crimes of the century. Yep. It's terrifying. Um, let's just get a little bit more footage before we, we get to Andrew. Um, this is live on CNN. This was the scene as well. You can hear also in Kiev here. Um, clearly there were some explosions going off in the background. Resist. Oh, I tell you what, I just heard a big bang right here behind me. I thought we shouldn't have done the live shot here. There are big explosions taking place yeah. in Kiev right now. Um, I can't see where they're taking place from this vantage point here on top of the roof of the hotel in central Kiev. And... I can't explain what they are, but I heard four or five explosions a few moments ago. I don't know whether our viewers or whether you in the studio there could hear, uh, what, we could what, hear it, Matthew. what I just heard. You could. I mean, that's terrifying because, I mean, I, clearly they should not have done the shot there, um, but they were trying to get they were trying to get um, a nice shot, I guess. But but that's that's just some of it. And, and I encourage people to look up. I mean, you can see interviews of. Ukrainians who have had to flee to Poland talking about why they've had to do so. Poland is going to ex experience an influx in refugees. And the U.S. has claimed that the troops that they've sent there will assist in that effort. But the scope of it is, is, is going to be unfolding. And at, at this point, primarily, um, I think we also should be emphasizing that refugee support should be one of our top priorities. And I also just want to make sure that we plug that we had Jack Crosby who uh, writes for the AM quickie and, you know, fr part of our, 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 our call. He's our colleague. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's writing for Rolling Stone and he, uh, you guys should check out his piece there. He, he, it's entitled on a Thursday morning in uh, Kharkiv, Ukraine makes or wakes to war. I want to read just one part of what he, he wrote about here, and you guys can read the rest of the article. The morning was a nightmare for every other person living in Ukraine. No one slept much last night. Russian and Bel Belarusian troops are fighting with the Ukrainian military in the north of the country. Okay, so that confirms it a bit more. Missiles or airstrikes hit Odessa, Kharkiv, Kiev. Uh, that's a little tough for me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Kamratosk, uh, Mariupol, and other cities. When the sun rose, myself and my traveling partner, a reporter for foreign policy, left our apartment and set off on foot to reach the Kharkiv Palace, where we had been told that uh, the major media outlets were staying. I received a tip that a higher up at a cable news network had informed Moscow of the media presence at the palace, perhaps as some kind of assurance that it would not be hit by missile strikes. That seemed like as good a bet as any. 
we're thinking of Jack right now. Um, horrible. Horrible. And everybody else who's there. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will be joined by Andrew Coburn, who will talk a bit about his book and also the uh, crisis that we're facing right now. <laughs> 